Hi, and thanks for logging on to the Daily Dvar Halach. And here's a brand new Halacha for you. And it's for Wednesday, 28th day of September, 25th day of El. Here we go. Minimum height for your Lulav when choosing a Lulav. Most of the Lulav you're going to look at are going to pass this minimum height, but just in case you're looking at a super short one, I want you to know that there is a minimum height for a Lulav, and that's four tefachim. A tefach is this, a fist and a thumb. So about one foot. Your, your Lulav must be as tall as one foot at least. And also, when you set up your Lulav, it's a good idea for your Lulav to stick out one tefach. Again, that's about four inches. About four inches past the Hadassim and the Arevos. They are going to be on the side of the Lulav, and the Lulav should stick out one tefach past them. On the, uh, if you're outside of Israel, the first two days of Yom Tov are like uh, all sort of being the first day, if you know what I mean. So anyway, during the first two days of Yom Tov, you have to make certain that the Lulav and Esrog uh, set that you're using belongs to you, and that's because God says, Ulekachtem lachem by Yom HaRishon, you should take for yourself on the first day, Outside of Israel, the first two days are like the first day, and so it's you've got to own it. Now, if you don't happen to own your own set, you could have someone give you their set. It could even be a matana almanas lahachser, which means a present on the condition that you give it back to them. They give it to you. They say it's yours on condition that you give it back to me, and then it's all kosher. When you give it back to them, it was yours when you owned it, and you fulfilled the condition, and you gave it back to them so that your friend owned it when he used it, you owned it when you used it, and that's the way it's supposed to be. You know, sometimes a shul buys a few estrogenul of sets for the guests to use on the first day or the first two days of Sukkot. This could be a problem because somebody might have used it before you, picked it up with thinking that he was going to acquire it, acquired it, made it his, and he never really said, okay, I'm giving it back to the shul now, so it belongs to him. And now you go and you use it, and you're not using your Lulav of an Esrog set. So do ask the rabbi what to do about using a shul Esrog and Lulav set for the mitzvah on the first two days of Sukkot. It could be a problem. The Tiomas. Now that's the middle, middle, middle branch of the Lulav. That is supposed to be best Tiomas, best Lulav, would be if it's unsplit all the way from the tip, up and down, up and down, up and down, right to the point, point, point of the lulav, the, there's no split in it at all. That's the best way. When you examine it, be very careful that you don't split it while you're examining it. And if you, I would recommend that you bring your lulav to an expert to just have them look it over to be sure that you've chosen a proper lulav that isn't split at all because it's not allowed to be split anywhere in the middle. Also, the tip of the lulav cannot be cut off. If the tip is cut off, that'll also invalidate your lulav. If your lulav dries up to the point where there's no green on it anymore, then it's an invalid lulav also. You know, some lulav and the way they're taken off of the tree do have a little bit of a brown, I don't want to say wrapping, it's not. It's like natural wrapping, a little bit of brown skin kind of around it. That stuff is not really a problem. That's natural to the lulav. But if the green part of the lulav has become brown from being dried out, that will invalidate your lulav. Thanks for logging on and log on again tomorrow for more. Bye-bye.